What is going on guys? Jump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy. Having a great day. Today's video, what we're going to do is be wiring up this EG4 LL server rack pack batteries, right? This is going to my solar system. These batteries are lithium iron phosphate. They are amazing. Shout out to Signature Solar. If you guys are interested in these batteries, I'll leave a link down in the description below, but I'm going to walk you guys through how you're properly supposed to install these all to the bus bars with the proper amount of torque and get the dip switches set, get it set for the 6000 XP, which is right here because you do have to change the mode on these batteries. And I have another three coming at a later date, which we will add to this rack. So I need to first things first, get these batteries organized. I really want to actually get them uh, moved up to the top. I'm going to start with battery one, two, and three. I got to change these dip switches here because that's uh, one of the big features of this. You have to have them in different configurations for them to communicate properly. And number one is going to be the unit that communicates to the uh, 6000 XP and I just think it's weird to have one at the bottom. So we're gonna move that to the top and one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down. So I'll obviously have one through three in this video, gonna tie them into the bus bars. We have a positive on the left side, negative on the right side. We're gonna get the cables. I believe this is two gauge. Even better, it's actually one gauge. I thought this was two, but this actually came with the uh, entire kit that I purchased. I'll leave a link right here if you guys haven't seen that video either. So let's get to it. Let me move these batteries up here. That's going to be the biggest pain in the butt doing by myself because these things are 100 pounds a piece. And then we'll get into uh, starting the wiring process. So that wasn't too bad. I mean, it would have been nice to have an extra set of hands, but it's really getting the battery underneath the first one up and onto these rails without the thing like slipping off. You kind of got to do it at like a 45 to so get your hand out of there and then slide it in, but whatever, it's done. I don't care. All right. Now what I want to do is teach you guys how to set up one of these batteries. So we're going to peel this off so you can see the nice shiny screen. All right. What we have to do is set this thing up for Lux power. Okay. If you guys could see the 6,000 XP, runs off of Lux Tech, right? So, or Lux Power Tech, it says. So we need to set this thing up for Lux Power. So keeping this breaker off, we're gonna put all these dip switches into programming mode, which is all over to the right side. We're gonna turn the battery on. Only takes a second to boot up. Once this thing's booted up, we're gonna hold this return button for five seconds. Okay, once we're in there, you're going to see the RS-485 protocol settings. You're going to hit enter. We're going to go down with this button right here to Lux Power P03-Lux, right? We're going to hit enter. We're going to go back. Then we're going to power cycle the battery. Just shut it off. Turn it back on. I just want to confirm that the settings saved. That's the biggest thing here. Make sure it's all good. And then we can change the dip switches and get it hooked up. So hold this for five seconds again. Okay, gonna hit enter, and you can see it is saved on P03-Lux. So we're just gonna hit the back button, shut this off one more time, configure the dip switches, and we're good to go. Now obviously you guys should be following the instructions no matter what you're gonna do when it comes to solar stuff, right? It kinda shows you what to do with the batteries here, but it does show us the dip switches. It shows ID one, two, and three. Those are the way we're gonna be putting these. So top one on the right needs to be over to the right, all the other ones to the left. The second one, ID2, second one down is to the right, everything else to the left, and then ID3, the top two are to the right, and everything else is to the left. So I think that should be good. I've heard that the first ID is only for um, the correct inverter, so I'm assuming that this is the correct inverter because they are technically the EG4 uh, brand, right? So hopefully we should be good with this. Um, yeah, so I guess now it's time to start wiring it up. All right, so if you guys remember, these batteries came with their own cables that go to the bus bars. If you guys didn't see those videos, go check them out. Um, they do have the communication ethernet cables that go in between each battery, and I'll actually show you guys that. I think I saved that page somewhere here. I just bent the corners. Oh, you know what? This is, um, this is actually where you're going to see uh, the 60 foot-pounds of... Uh, Oh, sorry, not foot-pounds. 
inch pounds of torque right so don't confuse that by the way if you use foot pounds you're going to be snapping these bolts inside the batteries don't ask me how i know all right so more or less you guys can see how this is uh, all connected to the bus bars right we're going to have the positive on this side negatives on this side and they have them both going out opposite ways i'm actually going to have them go out the same way and what we're going to do here is actually connect them in a crisscross fashion so i'm going to have one of them come out the top side and one of them come off the bottom side of the bus bar so these batteries are depleted evenly across the entire setup right i don't want anything to uh be just cycling through the top battery the most i want it to actually come through again diagonally so it drains them all evenly and charges them all evenly if that makes sense hopefully it does so let me see if i can find the communication section real quick that's ridiculous i was literally on the page i just didn't notice all right so you guys can see the uh the blue arrow there you can see how it goes, uh, the battery communications. The top port goes up to the bottom port on the one right above it. And then the top port goes to the communication on the, uh, the actual inverter. So you just basically chain it all the way through on the side here where it says battery communication. And then um, obviously there's other ports here like the RS485. I believe that might be the port you use. No, that's not the port you use. So you just use the battery communication, I guess, directly to the uh, 6000 XP and... They give me this one right here. This is the battery communication wire that actually connects to it. So I guess let's uh, let's start wiring this thing up first, and then we'll do the communications next. Okay, so this is a bit later in the day, and we got everything wired up, as you can see. Positive and negatives hooked up here inside the uh, panel, or the 6000 XP, rather. I got the communication cable all wired up. Now let's look at how I actually wired this EG4 server rack. All right, so I have the positive cable coming from the 6000 XP actually running through the side. As you guys could see, I got the positive, negative, and communications all through the same port, but I got it coming over here to the top part of this bus bar. Then I have every positive wire looped down in a nice fashion to each one of these bolts. As you guys can see, it's pretty nice. They actually have all of the bolts ready to go. The only thing I can say right here is the top bolt I actually added myself. There is a port, as you can see right here on the right side. It's like an opening, and it's just uh, covered over with plastic on the back side. So I just popped the, uh, the plastic there and got the bolt through it, and I put a nut on the other side, used my little box wrench on the back side, and a ratchet to tighten up the top because I didn't like the ports where they wanted you to put these uh, cables here. I'm assuming it's these bigger hex nuts right here. And I wanted it to be above the first input of the battery it just it was kind of like trying to squeeze it inside this thing in case i wanted to put that channel cover back on it would have been a friggin nightmare and just i didn't want any rubbing of wires on the nuts and just crossing over each other would have been weird so this connection right here was a little bit difficult so i wanted to go with the bolt up there but yeah nonetheless that works awesome over here on the negative side same thing looped in a nice fashion and i ended up taking the negative cable running it down to the bottom and it's bolted right there same style bolt i actually disconnected one of these uh fuses that i had extra left over from this setup of course i think falls off as i'm touching it but this uh yeah i had an extra one and i just took the nuts and the bolts out of it to connect that so that works perfect and then i got the communication cables in the top one is going to be going to the 6000 xp to do the communication between this battery bank setup and that and then we have it looped from the bottom port on this one to the top port on the one right below it bottom port to the top port right below it and then so on and so forth once i get these other three batteries we'll be doing the same exact thing all the way down the hardest part was getting this uh nut and bolt figured out and situated but the reason i did that again is because i want this to deplete evenly across the entire bank i don't want to cycle the top battery more by just connecting here and here now i've heard that's an issue i don't know how true it is you guys let me know in the comments but i feel way more comfortable doing the crisscross fashion that's exactly how i have this unit here set up so it's been working perfect and all the batteries haven't given me any issues but yeah this is a uh, pretty cut and dry pretty simple to do again i got all the dip switches all set up ready to go one two and three i'll have four five and six below it after that now all i really got to do is turn it on but right now it's kind of a crappy day out and i don't want to turn it on and leave it on so what i think we'll do is just turn this thing on to make sure everything works and everything comes on properly i think it's probably going to turn on the 6000 xp i'm just a bit nervous because i've never turned on a unit like this but 
Just so you guys know, quick note, when you're hooking up a system like this, you typically need to have a little resistor. It's like a white uh, block. I wish I had it here to show you. I can show you guys in the next video if you want. Let me know in the comments below. But it's got like two uh, wires off each side of it. And you typically, what you do is you hook it up to the, uh, the positive side of the battery bank and then you touch it to the the port right here where you'll actually be bolting it to and it will pre-charge the capacitors inside the inverter. I had to do it for this grow watt right here, but the 6000 XP specifically doesn't need you to pre-charge the capacitor. So you can just hook it right up just like this and start it up. So I guess, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to see how it goes. Let's do it. Turn on one, turn on the other. And that one, all right, get all three on. Let's see what they're at for battery level, 55. This one's got 55, and this one's got 54. Look at that. All right, so again, I don't have any of these batteries on. The breakers are all off. Once I flip this breaker, it's all over. So here goes nothing. I was just about to flip the breaker and all these screens went off. They have a sleep function or something. That's kind of neat. Anyways, that just came back on. But you guys need to be careful. Once I flip this breaker, these ports are going to be live. So what I'm doing right now is I want to check, just give a wiggle to every one of the cables, make sure everything is completely tight, okay, so we don't have any issues because you want to make sure everything is completely secure, solid, and good to go just before the final turn on because it makes me a bit nervous I ain't gonna lie and I still do need to ground all this stuff so that's another reason I don't want to just like get this thing going but here goes nothing all right they're all on we should be live up to that point let me go grab my electrical tester and we'll just make sure that does have power Touch the negative and positive. You can see we're at 52.72 volts. So it's definitely powered up. All right, I just threw this cover on quick with one screw just because I'm a wuss and I don't want to be turning this on while it's open. So there goes nothing. Turn that on. And I think the power switch for this unit's over here. Three, two, one. Please work. Please work. Yes that's sick all right i have to go through the manual to set this thing up to make sure everything is proper with this uh battery setup but it's all working that's huge and awesome i don't have the panels on i still have to turn those over on at the pergola if you guys didn't see that last video i just dropped wiring that up go check it out i'll leave a link right there but we're gonna get this all set up in the next video and uh yeah i'm super excited so shut it off for now these guys i'm actually going to kill as well because I don't need them on if nothing is going to be running. Just gonna shut it all off and we're good to go. Guys, you're awesome. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go hit that like button, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.